In the morning, two towboats showed up to get us into the slip. We had one guy hook up on our back starboard side, and then the other guy helped guide him in. They slid us right into the slip, no problem, and then we hopped into our dinghy and tied up on the dock so they could lift Talia. The marina we picked is $55.50 a night for the first 14 days and then goes up to $74 a night. Basically, it jumps from $1.50 a foot to $2 a foot. We have to make two repairs on this drive leg while we're in the yard. The first is replacing the broken yoke, and the second is finding a welder to fix the broken ear on the transom plate. She was low enough to the ground that we just used our swim ladder to get up and down, which is honestly the main reason we wanted the dinghy out of the way before Talia was on the hard. Unfortunately, this yard doesn't let you stay on your boat overnight, so we rented an Airbnb that was a 10 minute walk from the boat yard. It was $900 for the week, and honestly, that was cheaper than any hotel we could find. Why don't we start in the back? So that way people know <laughs> that her hair doesn't look silly. It's just great <laughs> in the back. <laughs> okay, a bit of a slow start this morning, um, but we're gonna head over to the boat yard and um, try to take this drive leg off. Um, just the two of us. We can drive like if we try. <laughs> <laughs> we grabbed our package from the office that was sent over from the UK and unboxed the new yoke. Oh my God, this box is like taped into the next century. Shout out to Gwen for being a packaging god. Okay, so new bellows. Should have two new yokes. Let's see right here. This is what they look like unpainted. We also grabbed like a bunch of spare parts um, and some different zincs and stuff, um, just based off their idea of having spares is good. And even though we will never move with the dinghy behind us again, so we shouldn't break another yoke, that way I bought a second yoke because when it inevitably happens again, um, they say, what do they say? Two is one and one is done. <laughs> so now we have two. Okay. So now to the hard part, which is working on this drive leg. It's only like a seven minute YouTube video. I watched um, these guys swap it, so it should probably take us like four to five minutes to get it done. <laughs> four to five hours. <laughs> um, but we at least found out where we need to drain the oil. Um, that's gonna be step one. Well, I guess step one is um, undoing all of the tying that we did to keep it in place as we cross the Gulf Stream. And then it'll be dropping it, draining the oil, getting it off. We'll probably have to get it up here just because we won't want to store it down there for a bunch of days. And I think it's going to be off while we get the welders to actually manage it. Step one is going to be getting all of these ropes down. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to go up and then drop this red one. And then we're going to, I'm going to like, like slowly lower it via the line up there. And I just want you to kind of help it down. Okay. I'm gonna undo the thread line. Okay. Okay, I don't know. Let's start letting it down real slow. Okay, I'm holding it. It didn't come down all the way. Okay, you try to pull it down a little bit? Hold on the rope, but the actual leg isn't moving. Okay, hold on. I'm coming. Just hold on to it and keep it supported. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, love. We gotta be careful because you don't want the teeth to be like tearing it up, you know? Okay. So it's filled with oil. Very good. Before we could take the leg down, we had to drain all of the oil out of it, which was a gallon and a half of Hypoid 90 weight oil. 
There was a lot of paint Patrick had to scratch out of the way so we could remove the screw for the oil. You don't know the amount of water coming out of this thing. That is kind of milky. It is like a different texture of oil, but there was definitely some water coming out of there first. That being said, it is a thing that sits completely underwater all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of water in there. Be about 75% of this bucket worth. I got it. Just make sure it doesn't fall off. So just me at the boatyard for right now as Michaela's working on our next vlog. I've been kind of thinking a lot about this and I'm trying to like weigh the pros and cons, but I think we might have to take the transom plate off, which is going to be one, super difficult, two, kind of like a lot of unknown unknowns, which is like a little scary, um, but should be okay. I'm just uh, worried about the fact that if we do have to heat up the transom plate so much and we don't take it off, there's not really a way of knowing how the heat transferred through the plate and affected what was behind it. Now, like in a perfect world, if it can happen quickly enough, um, it'll be localized to just the area that needs to be welded and then we wouldn't have to worry about it, but it's like if you are if you start welding it there and then you have to take the transom plate off anyway to find out what's behind it, then it would just be easier to weld it off. But for right now, we're just going to continue to get this uh, yoke off so that the welder can kind of like see practice on it a little bit, um, which means we just have to remove this one pin. And then this uh, drop down guy. Um, I bought like a little bolt for it, but when I was watching the video, it seems like they got a much longer bolt. So I might have to go back to the Marine office where they do sell a bunch of bolts and stuff. But first I gotta get this pin out because that's gonna be like the thing that's holding it across sideways right now. legitimately took them like two seconds in the video to pull this thing out. Like they just undid the pin and then just grabbed some pliers and whoop. God, you get dirty so fast and also I'm so sweaty. Man, it's just tough when you're so new to this and like just new to a lot of like the concepts in general. Like I'm trying to get this pin out and it just doesn't want to come out. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm Googling maybe how to loosen it. I've been tapping it with a hammer and it's coming out like very slowly. But I'm like, I don't know if that's gonna break it or if that's gonna bind it up as it like goes through the tube. Every little bit of this is a struggle. But we'll get through it. Okay, I changed my shirt because I had to go in the store and I felt uh, kind of gross being in a completely sweater through one. So we got a much longer bolt, same size, same threading. So hopefully we can get this a little farther in and then be able to pull this out. This is what it was all for. This is what it was all for. But now it's off. So now we can take this to the welder, see if we need to take that transom plate off. We are talking to a couple machine shops about what to do about the transom plate. And it's still a little up in there if we can get somebody to weld the bushing in. I think we're feeling a little more like we need the transom plate off and to get a new air machined on, which is like kind of brutal, but kind of just the state of things. Um, so until then, uh, some of the other projects we wanted to do is like look at the seacock for the 
um, bathroom sink and also check on these swim ladders because at least on the starboard side one, um, there ends up being quite a bit of water down there. Um, and we don't have like a really easy way to bilge it out. So it's always a pain. And you also just don't want water in your boat. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, give that our best shot. It looks like it's gonna be a little bit of boat yoga for Michaela and I me. Mean. <laughs> Part of me thinks it's just spinning back there. Okay, all of those spin suspiciously easily, um, which I guess means two things. One is we're gonna need to hold the bolt on the other side. And then two, I'm gonna guess that they're leaking. <laughs> Just based off of how much it wiggles and then how much these spin, I'm gonna guess that it's probably a problem, which is good. That means we can fix it. Can you screw maybe? Patrick was up there reaching through the hall to keep the nut in place while I unscrewed the bolt, but for the lower ones, he had to go inside. Now we have to get the last two bolts, which are definitely the trickiest bolts to get. It is going to require some immense boat yoga to get behind that pole. So let's see if we can make that happen. Keep going, love. Are you sure you can't just pull it straight out? This is what was waiting for us behind the swim ladder, or swim step, as I like to call it. Definitely could use some love, though. This swim ladder actually, like, seems pretty solid. And it doesn't have like sealant around it. Um, and we also don't get any water in this uh, bilge. So it makes me kind of think that maybe this one's in good enough shape to leave it for now. But that other one definitely... Uh, was not happy. Definitely was not happy. Like, you know, the other ones we could like spin, you could just spin it with your hand, you know? This is the chaos of uh, doing boat work projects. Just like every single tool we have, just kind of hanging out, ready to go. <laughs> it's like slightly frustrating that this marina doesn't let you stay on your boat while you're here, but on the other side, it's super hot and we have stuff everywhere. So part of me is like, maybe that wasn't the worst thing in the world to not have to live on the boat while we're doing this. Speaking of having to stay somewhere else, we were paying about $900 um, for a week in this Airbnb. We saw that they had no booking, so we reached out and asked if we could pay in cash and do a little bit less money, um, and they agreed to that. So getting a little bit more of a deal here, uh, which is great because this is costing us quite a bit of money. <laughs> Speaking of money, we realized we were going to be in the yard for more than one week and needed to be able to get around and run to hardware stores. So we ended up renting a car, which was $260 a week. I feel a little bit emotional not being here every day. <laughs> I mean, we've been here every day, but not living on the boat full time. Yeah, um, it's like coming and visiting our home. That's yeah. um, a little bit in disrepair. I know, it makes me like want to cry, like seeing her on the heart. I don't know why. It's okay, we're fixing it up. Um, Today was like a day filled with like a lot of meetings and we picked up our rental car because we're gonna be here another week and we just need to start getting around um, to start buying stuff and taking the transom plate to a machine shop. So it just kind of made sense. We're just gonna look at the inside of the engine compartment and start trying to figure out like, okay, well, how does this transom plate attach? I know it's glued on super well, which is gonna make it terrible to get off and then we'll have to glue it on super well again, but that's that's okay. Yeah, let's just give it a look, hit Home Depot. Um, I know I need to get like some scraping pads, so. <laughs> I wonder if we can just kind of like cut up this way and then we can kind of like glue it back on. Okay, so I think we're just gonna try to draw where we're gonna cut on the sound insulation and then just like get it up. It's a little sad because Casper did such a nice job on it, but um, the world must go on. After a lot of searching, we found a shop that said they could weld the ear, but we needed to bring the whole transom plate to them, so we ended up taking it down. It's almost like we measured it. 
Our insulation surgery went pretty well, I'd say. We can now see all six bolts. Looks pretty standard stuff. These guys all look like really clean and good shape, no corrosion. So that's all dandy. 17 mil is the right size of these bolts. Or I guess these nuts. Um, we're just gonna give them like a little spin to see if they move. Um, and then we'll see if we need to like put some kind of like penetrating oil or something on them. That one I already loosened. <laughs> Same with that one. <laughs> that one I did not, and that, that one was pretty good. God, Casper with his <laughs> zip ties. <laughs> El Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Perfect. what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, <laughs> that was exactly the take I wanted. Good. I think these are the things we want. Uh, these are adhesive scrapers that we'll put on our little, like, bush I don't exactly know, brushless sander or something it's called. Uh, we have, like, a DeWalt one. Um, I bought it because it's good also for... Ah, here we go. For, like, sanding pads. Um, it'll just like sand a little area for you, um, which we may want to grab some of those as well. Adhesive scraper I think is going to be very helpful in getting the transom plate off because we'll kind of run the edge of it and then we'll probably run like a high, a high tension fishing line or something and back and forth and back and forth just to pull the transom plate um, kind of off the glue. Here's what a wire brush looks like. It's like a brush. Ow. But it's wires. <laughs> Ah, okay. All of the bolts are loose. So now a bit of the trickier part. Well, not the trickier part, but a trickier part. Is like, how do I go ahead and disassemble this bit enough to get this stuff out of the way so we can get the transit plate all the way off? Since this whole transom plate has to come off, we kind of have to disassemble things a little bit more. So first I was trying to get this guy out. Um, that's like the straight piece of metal. It's connected to like the drive leg lever up in the cockpit, the one by the floor. Um, and that's what turns the drive leg. So I think there's just one more pin holding this guy in. And that is it, we can see into our boat now. Which is kind of crazy. Uh, I'm also just gonna disconnect the, uh, the drive leg lever. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave all of this up here, um, but just get this loose enough that it'll come off with it because it is all pretty connected up. I think it's a little more threaded than you would think. Cause she's my best friend's girl. A touch of rust in there. I wonder if it's just because there's water in the oil. So this boat's starting to come out, just with like a little taps on the other side. Um, which is good, which is good. But the thing we're gonna kind of run into here is like this thing's super glued down. So, we have like our brushless, our brushless motor with a flexible scraping edge. And I'm hoping we can kind of just like start around the edges and then maybe figure out a way to like work our way down around the bolts, etc. It's not very sharp though. So I'm hoping we don't do any damage to the boat. Um, but if we do, we'll figure that out too. I talked to Casper and I think like starting with maybe like a more manual just scraper would be a little better off than trying to start with this tool that kind of can go all over the place. So I'm gonna give that a go. This one seems to be working quite well. Um, now that I know that these are just, uh, these are not threaded through the plate or anything, I just kind of bonked them out. 
um, enough that they should be easy enough to uh, get on with this little crowbar we have. My boy Hunter said it may be easy enough or easier to be scraping the sealant from the back if we just put the string and kind of like work our way back behind it. So we're going to give that a go. So yeah, this is just like high strength fishing line. I don't know why it's pink. Let's just... Uh... You can feel it got hot and uh, immediately broke, so. I think I'm gonna try to tap forward these bottom bolts to see if we can get like a little bit more separation. Like this screw that holds on the lock um, lever, but it's like in the way of the bolt. So I don't quite get that. Um, but tapping forward, the other one seemed okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and give that a go. And I think we're almost there, honestly, which is pretty insane. I'm fully aware that there's an O-ring back here that we're probably destroying. Um, I think we're gonna have to do one of those like DIY O-ring kits to like make a new one. Uh, the more you look at this, the more it looks more like uh, it's more art than science when it comes to like these old boat parts. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure when we have like a, is it worth it to buy like an old catamaran? Um, this is gonna be one of the main sticking points of like, can you deal with the fact that like there's way less spare parts available? Um, when things go wrong, you're gonna have to get pretty creative. It is a cool way to get like into a budget friendly catamaran, um, get two hulls sitting at anchor, but um, certainly a cost in, that's not monetary, uh, too bad. But let's go ahead and get this thing off. Beautiful. <laughs> 